So they went to Samuel to ask him for his help. They told him, You must find us someone fit to be a king. Samuel asked God for advice. God said to Samuel, They have rejected me, Samuel, not you. Do as they ask. Find them a king to lead them into battle. But explain to them what it means to have a king before you do anything else. Samuel went to the elders and said to them, I am ready to find you a king. But first you must understand what it will mean to have a king. He will take over your sons for the army and ask for taxes. He will also take one-tenth of your best produce. He will do what is best for you, but you will be under his rules and have to obey him. But the elders really wanted to have a king. So Samuel chose a handsome man called Saul. In the beginning, Saul proved to be a good king. He raised a strong army and fought the Philistines. But soon he became very proud. He broke many religious laws and stopped listening to Samuel. Samuel said to Saul one day, So, since you have rejected God, God has rejected you as king. Samuel never saw Saul again after that day. He decided to look for a new king for the Israelites. All right, listen. Long time ago in Damascus, there lived a man called Ananias. Ananias was a follower of Jesus. One day, he had a dream in which Jesus told him to go to the house of Judas and ask for a man called Saul. He told Ananias that he must give Saul back his sight. Ananias had heard about Saul and all the bad things that he had done to the people who were faithful to Jesus. He asked Jesus, Saul comes to Damascus with the purpose of arresting all who are your followers. Why should I go and see him? Jesus replied, You must, as I have chosen him to bring my name to the people of all nations. Do not worry. He will see how much he has to suffer for me. When he woke up, Ananias went to meet Saul. As he entered the house Saul was staying in, he saw Saul praying. He laid his hands on Saul and told him that he was sent by Jesus to heal him and to fill him with the Holy Spirit. Saying that, he blessed him and Saul could see again. He also baptized Saul and gave him some food and water. After staying for some days in Damascus, Saul changed his name to Paul and started teaching about Jesus. So, did you like the story, kids? Oh, we loved it! Good, good! Well then, a long time ago, King Saul of Israel had made David a brave man and officer in his army. The people of Israel were very happy. He won all the battles that Saul sent him to fight. The Israelite women sang joyful songs in praise of David. They sang, Saul has won thousands, but David has won ten thousands. All these praises of David angered King Saul. He did not like it at all. He said, They give me less honor than David. Next, they will make him king. Saul was jealous of David. From that day onwards, he watched his actions and movements very carefully. The next day, suddenly, an evil spirit took control of Saul. He started behaving like a madman in his house. 
David was playing the harp like he did every day, and Saul was holding a spear. All of a sudden, he threw his spear at David. David moved just in time and thus was saved. Saul realized that the Lord was not with him anymore. So Saul sent David away to fight dangerous wars with a thousand men under his command. Even then, David managed to win all the battles. Saul became even more afraid of him. But the people loved David because he was such a good leader. David is so brave. I love him more and more every day. Stop it, Freckles. You are being silly. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Long time ago, there was a man named Saul. Saul had been raised in a very religious Jewish family, so he was a believer of the old Jewish customs. Saul had become very angry at Jesus and his followers for changing people's views towards the old Jewish customs. Now Saul was so upset with Jesus and his followers for going against Jewish customs that he decided that he would hunt down every man and woman suspected of being a follower of Jesus in Jerusalem. Saul wanted to go further than just Jerusalem, so he went to the chief priests of Jerusalem. He said to them, You must give me permission to also search in Damascus. I will hunt down every man who chooses to follow Jesus. The priests agreed. As Saul was on his way to Damascus, suddenly a bright light shone in the sky. He was scared and fell to the ground. He then heard a voice from the sky above. The voice asked, Saul, why do you torture me? Saul was confused. Trembling, he asked who the voice was. The voice said, I am Jesus, the one you torture. Get up and reach the city. There you will know what will happen to you. When the light vanished, Saul got up. He could not see any more. His soldiers had also seen the light, but they could not hear the message meant for Saul. As he was blind, his friend Shad took him to the city. For three days, Saul lay in bed, not able to see a thing. He could not eat or drink. As he lay, he prayed and waited for what would happen to him to happen. Wow! What will happen to Saul? All in good time, Freckles. Let's wait and see. So, today's story is about how God helped Saul to become a good man. That sounds interesting. Saul was known for doing things which were not good for the people. He punished, imprisoned, and threatened people who believed that Jesus was the Messiah. He even hurt them. But Saul thought he was doing the right thing and felt that God was pleased with him because he did not believe in Jesus. He had pretty much taken care of all the believers who lived in his area and then he wanted to go to Damascus to stop the believers there. He received letters from the high priest in Damascus in support of his doings. So Saul planned to bring back all the believers of Jesus in Damascus to Jerusalem in chains. Saul was on his way to Damascus with a group of people when he suddenly saw a bright light shining down on him. He fell to the ground in shock. Then a loud voice said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who is speaking to me? Afraid, Saul asked. I am Jesus. The voice said, It is me you are persecuting. Now, I want you to get up and go to the city, and I will tell you what to do next. The men who were traveling with Saul were speechless. They heard the voice but could not see the face of the man who spoke the words. Saul tried to get up, and that is when he realized that he was blind. He could not see anything or anyone. So the men with him led him into the city of Damascus. 
Saul stayed there for three days without seeing anything. Those three days he did not eat or drink water. There was a believer of Jesus in Damascus called Ananias. One day he had a vision where God asked him to go and talk to Saul. Right at that moment when Ananias had a vision, Saul was praying. God told Saul that a man named Ananias would visit him and he would lay hands on Saul which would get back his sight. Ananias was not too happy with God's instructions. He said, Lord, I have heard the terrible things that Saul did to your believers in Jerusalem and he came here to do the same. Do you really want me to go see him? It's okay. God said, Go ahead and do as I tell you. I have chosen Saul to take my message to the Gentiles as well as to the people of Israel. Ananias obeyed God and went to see Saul. He put his hands on Saul's eyes and said, Brother, God has sent me to get your sight back and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something that looked like scales fell off Saul's eyes and he could see everything. Saul was baptized right away. He drank some water and got back his strength. That was an amazing story, Harry. Oh yes it was! Hope you enjoyed the story too. We'll be back soon. Bye bye! To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep.